The Ag Tech demonstration that we have here at Loxton is mostly centred on two particular patches of planting, um, just to make the best use of what we've got here in terms of crop types to demonstrate the, um, the Ag Tech that's being um, demonstrated here at Loxton Research Centre. So this is a patch of citrus, and then there's a patch of vines that we'll walk to across the other side here in a minute. Um, and basically the, the uh, companies demonstrating their uh, tech are able to put, either put hardware or if they're doing non-hardware type activities, focus their activities on these two blocks so they can demonstrate the tech in either citrus or vines or both. Um, we do have some uh, equipment also at the Armand Centre of Excellence, which is about 5 k's north of here towards Bury. Um, uh, a couple of the, the companies have some of their tech there as well or are taking imagery from that uh, property as well. So we can kind of cover citrus, vines, almonds. Um, that's the main crops we have on the research centre. Uh, we have small bits of other things um, and we grow some industrial hemp. Um, but that's not here for very long. Uh, but some, some companies have expressed a bit of interest in that as well. So we might see where we go with that. Um, so I guess there's a few steps to what's happening here and I'll try and put this into some sort of logical context. Um, one of the first things that we've um, had to do here because this centre has been here for a long time but it hasn't had a lot of money spent on it in a little while. Um, so we have upgraded the irrigation control system and over here we've got the Talgill Tower, uh, one of uh, a number of uh, nodes where we are connecting back to the, the main controller uh, and we can um, automatically control the irrigation which we had a system here many years ago which fell into disrepair and hadn't been being used. Um, and everything was being turned on and off manually. Um, so Peter's pretty happy to have this up and running and he can actually do things automatically now, um, though we're still having issues with that are related to our irrigation system, not the control system. Uh, so things that blow out when it's turned on and suddenly we've got to shut everything down and start again. So a uh, few issues there that we're still working through. Um, but that's pretty key to some of the tech that we're demonstrating um, to be able to turn things on and off automatically rather than having um, people running around doing that. Then we have a range of different tech being demonstrated um, and some of that is hardware and I'll, I guess I wanted to talk about that in terms of point source and then uh, wider area remote sensing type tech um, and then other tech that's about doing other things. Um, so what we have here, and most of the, the stuff that you'll see here is also in the viticulture block, um, but what we have here is a range of different soil water monitoring uh, technologies, um, and they are obviously point source. So we're just measuring in this row under these trees, and we've got, um, so there's a crop X, which is a capacitance probe, is the blue mushroom uh, arrangement there. Next to that is um, uh, GB lights on the green brain system. And the Tevatronic tensiometers are the little green boxes there. Uh, so they're electronic tensiometers. There's two of them at different depths. Um, the green brain, I can't remember how many depths. I think it's four, three. Dominic's given me the word. Um, so we've got three different types of soil water monitoring point source devices here. Centec, uh, are, so all of these are also in the, the, in the vine block and Centec is in the vine block as well. Um, so we've got all of those side by side so people can come, they can pull up the data, have a look at it side by side and see um, what the data looks like from the same block quite close together with the different technologies. Um, so to help people to be able to compare and understand, see, see how they find that data to look at and whether it makes sense to them, which one they think might be more useful to them. 
and um, we've got tensiometers and GB lights which are saw water tension. We've got the CropEx, we've got Centec which are saw water content. The two different things that are related, I could give you a whole story about that. I won't, um, but if anyone's interested. Uh, but that gives people pretty much the full range of different types of soil water data that you're likely to, to come across. Um, and so they can look at that. Um, I can talk them through that if they want to come and have a, a tour um, and talk about you know, the, the, the differences, the pros and cons, um, you know, advantages of doing it one way or the other. We also have here the uh, arable mark II, uh, which D3 AG are the Australian um, agents for. That is uh, a combination of a, a mini weather station. So it's measuring uh, temperature, humidity, uh, it does rainfall. Um, it also has a, um, a multispectral sensor, which is looking down into this tree on the right. Uh, it's just giving you one reading, but it's giving um, uh, NDVI and chlorophyll index. Now, in a citrus tree, that's not changing much. Um, it probably is more uh, useful, I guess, in a, an annual crop where you're planting, you're starting off with very low uh, vegetation um, in, the, in the sensing area. And as your crop develops, that uh, increases and then saturates as it covers the ground. Um, here, it's just really sitting there to demonstrate the technology because we don't have a lot of annual crop uh, here. We might pop it into the hemp later and see what it does. Um, so that's another point source measurement, um, but it's measuring a number of things right here in this in this block. Um, so that's one level of tech, and, and all of these, um, all of these, the data is going up to the cloud, and then automatically, you know, we can we can access that. You can go onto the um, uh, AgTech demonstration site on the Persa website. Uh, go to the Loxton uh, Centre Farm, pull up any of these, and see the data there, uh, and and visualise that, view it, uh, compare it. Um, have a look at what's there. We might, I might not say more here. I'll, we'll move over there and I'll talk about some other things. But uh, have you got any questions about what I've talked about so far? Everyone's stunned. <laughs> to access the data on the PESA website, as you said, do we need to log in? Like username and password. So on the on the Persa AgTech website, some of the data sites there is a login, but the information is on the website to allow you to log in. Um, so there will be the username and password on the Persa website, and then when you get to the you click on the link, get to the the source website, then you enter that information to get in. We're trying to some of the um, companies have. Um, made that easy in the sense that you just click on the link and you go straight there. Um, but most of them you have to enter the password, username and password. Yeah. Okay, if we don't have any other questions, we might walk across to the viticulture block and I'll talk about um, some other aspects of the tech that we've got. Um, and we're also going to have a presentation over there about the Vidivisor program, which is also happening here. Um, using the same viticulture patch um, and kind of parallel with what we're doing with ag tech demonstration. So Hans Loder from Penley Estate. Just a question from going, coming past that weather st station there. Um, just in terms of measuring cloud cover, I know weather stations can measure, measure light intensity, but is there any AgTech solution? Does anyone here today know if there's an AgTech solution which can actually categorically replace that burnt paper strip to give us a reading on when there is cloud cover? The astronomers have. Um, yeah, the astronomers have sorted that out. Um, what you do is you take an infrared sensor and you point it at the sky, 
and measure the temperature of the sky. Um, and if there's no clouds, you get the temperature of outer space or a big, large sub-zero number. And as soon as the cloud comes in, you're actually measuring the temperature of the cloud. So there's a formula you can apply and it'll tell you heavy cloud, light cloud, no cloud. There are, there are also sensors that will give you incoming solar radiation amount, which doesn't actually give you cloud cover, but it's obviously the more cloud you have, the less incoming solar you have. Um, and there's a, you know, there's a curve of what you expect through the day, and you can infer from that. So, yeah. Um, so, at the Citrus site, we talked about point source measurement and mainly um, uh, soil water monitoring. I forgot to mention that AKI Primary Solutions are about to install some uh, another set of um, sensing material over there. Um, I just checked on the way past and it doesn't seem to be there yet, so it's on the way. It, it's TDR, okay. So that's time domain reflectometry, which is slightly different to capacitance. But it also measures your soil water content, not tension. Um, so, uh, and another thing that we have just a couple of here is uh, FarmBot with um, measuring. Now, normally they do levels in tanks and that sort of thing. We don't have tanks here, but we've got a, a sensor over here on the Vidivisor block. Uh, which is measuring pressure and flow uh, in that valve unit. So basically most of the time it's measuring nothing and then when the irrigation system runs it gives us the pressure just after the valve, it gives us the flow rate after the valve and we can see that this, yes the system is running, um, it's running at the right flow rate for the block or no it's gone berserk because there's all these uh, hoses come off uh, or whatever. Um, and what the pressure is that's uh, running through the system. So that's another another point source measurement. Um, and as I said, in here, and, and if you want to walk up this particular row here, uh, in row 17 we've got uh, another set of soil water monitoring uh, technology, mostly the same things that are over in the citrus block, and down in about row 13 I think is the Centec. And then there's some other gear in here that is for the Vidivisor program, which is more developmental tech. Uh, other ways of measuring or new technology to measure the same things or different things. And Bradley's going to talk about that shortly, um, about that. Uh, and that's kind of the, a step back from where we are. The Ag Tech demonstration is really about demonstrating existing tech. Uh, the Vidivisor, one of the things that Vidivisor is doing is developing some new tech and, work and, and other ways of uh, integrating information. So we've got all that point source data. It's probably something that in my history is very familiar. Um, I guess the next step uh, to that is then putting some spatial data on top of those point source data points uh, and seeing, okay, so we've got a sensor here. It's telling me this is that representative of what's happening across the rest of the block. So we have a number of companies that are providing imagery. So we've heard from Andy this morning, so Airborne Logic are, are providing us with drone imagery. We've got Ceres, Ceres, I'm never sure how to say that. We've got Scott over here, so that's air, uh, airplane borne um, imagery equipment. Um, they do regular flights both here and at the Armand Centre of Excellence. And Scott's asked me to let you know that if you want to give him... So, Scott, put your hand up. Uh, if you want to give him your email address, he can give you notification emails or put you on the list for notification emails when there's an update of the imagery for here. So you'll be able to then click on that link and go and have a look at the latest imagery. Um, we also then have some satellite imagery, and I'm just going to use my cheat notes here. Uh, so... Green Brain also have uh, imagery now in their partnership with Concilium Technology. Thank you. Um, uh, and Deep Planet uh, are also providing imagery of either this whole property or specifically this patch and the citrus patch. So you can look at the point source, soil water data, you can look at the imagery, you can um, you know, see how evenly 
things are happening across that block or whether really the point source is is not the whole story and it's never the whole story uh, and uh, and compare those those different data sources uh, on on the um, oh, and aerobotics sorry aerobotics are also providing some imagery um, now some of those companies are not currently live on the website um, so some of that's still in development and will will come online in time so uh, this is a it's a developing story um, and the ag tech demonstration here will continue to grow so just because you've been to the site once and had a look doesn't necessarily mean you've got the full story um, peter talked about uh, the supplant system which is autonomously running irrigation for us so that block is across this way behind the vineyards there's a small block of the citrus you can see there's citrus across here just a small block about i think it's 0.8 of a hectare or so um, that we're actually running that system on um, it's kind of a bit of bit of a uh, a case of well we're not sure how that's going to go so here's a little patch you can use um, if you stuff it up it doesn't matter <laughs> but uh, that might just be uh, my cautious nature um, but yeah that's we, we're doing that on a separate block so that that's a separate exercise it's not going to interfere with any of what we're measuring here um, and plus Peter's using all the gear that's in here to to manage the, the farm um, as well as having point source data having spatial data one of the things Peter talked about this morning and Ollie talked about and Andy talked about was the integration of all that information um, now some of that's happening on particular platforms so green brain is one example where um, we've got point source data and spatial data together on the one platform but then there's the next level up is pulling information from a range of different sources uh, and ideally any data source you've got that's the ideal that's the difficult one because not everyone is talking to everyone else but that's the that's the holy grail i guess of of ag tech is to pull all the data sources together into one place uh, and present that data interpret that data and help you to make decisions uh, so Swan Systems is one company that, that does that quite well and they're talking to most of the, well they're talking to all of the other ag tech companies demonstrating here to talk to them about getting APIs to be able to access that information and pull it in um, and other companies as well that they're talking to. So that's one of the platforms that we have demonstrated here and again on the website you can go and have a look at that, um, the Swan Systems platform for uh, this site um, the gold tech irrigation controller is a key part of that um, and basically the way peter's using it at the moment is to take the recommendations out of uh, actually i'm not sure peter peter's over there are you using swan or are you still making your own decisions right okay okay um, at the Armand Centre of Excellence, SWAN is actually being used as the platform for managing irrigation. Um, so there's a range of different tech there measuring both soil water monitoring uh, and also plant-based monitoring. Um, and the Anthony Wachtel, who's the farm manager out there, is actually pulling that all into SWAN and then using SWAN to actually send his irrigation schedule to the controller. Um, and so that just... It's not a fully autonomous system. I believe it can be, but at the moment it's being used basically to give recommendations. Anthony will tweak that if he feels he needs to and then upload it to the controller and, and away it goes. Um, AgWorld is another uh, technology that has similar aims. Uh, uh, trying to pull data sources together, integrate them and present that in one place. We also have a number of technologies here that aren't in that sort of irrigation space. So yes, we're irrigated horticulture, so a lot of stuff is focused on irrigation, but there's all sorts of other uh, tech that is useful in 
managing an orchard that isn't necessarily directly related to irrigation. So some of the other companies we have involved, Safe Ag Systems, uh, demonstrating their tech um, on site, not so much on site here in a practical sense, um, but Safe Ag Systems is actually being used at the Armand Centre of Excellence as their um, safety system. Uh, and that's about logging on as you arrive, being able to see uh, alerts for hazards um, and knowing who's on site and when people have, have arrived or gone. Um, Onsite is another company that does something similar and you may or, may or may not have logged in with Onsite on, as you arrived this morning or you have the opportunity to do that in the, in the tent later on, see how their system works. Fielding is a company that are planning to do some demonstration here and COVID has got in the way because they're Victorian based. Um, so they're still trying to get here. Fielding is about um, monitoring uh, equipment movements and operations. Uh, so sensors on tractors and sprayers and slashers and so on. Um, and that will be put in place in time so that um, you know, we'll be able to monitor where equipment has mo been moving around the property. Um, some of what we saw this morning with uh, making sure that every row has been sprayed uh, and that sort of uh, information will be part of that. Uh, Tag Log Australia is more about monitoring people and what they're doing, um, what their output is in terms of harvesting or pruning or whatever operations people are op involved in. Uh, UFG Group are doing bird management um, and they're going to be installing a... Um, uh, a demonstration uh, here hopefully um, and they would have been here today and showing that except that they've had some um, personnel issues I'm not familiar with exactly what's going on but they weren't able to make it today um, Moby Shear is um, cordless equipment including pruning equipment um, Peter P um, Mike here um, farm I'll let you say that in the mic. You'll hear me this afternoon. Uh, profitability, so we're the next stage on from your accounting software, looking at what patches are making what amount of money for you, which needs to be pulled up, and also forward planning. So if you're pulling um, old plantings out, putting new plantings in, what's the finance look like in three or four or five years when that productivity comes back in? Thank you. And also a company called Precision Technology. So we've got a range of different technologies being demonstrated, some with on-site hardware, uh, some not, um, but a, a range of different technologies and solutions for, for growers. And that's only going to grow with time, we, we trust. Um, and uh, so the, the way that it's set up is that um, there's a there's a web version um, on the PERSA website and anyone can go and have a look at the data or the demonstrations um, but I'm here as a local contact for people who want to come and actually physically look at some of the equipment or talk to somebody who has a bit of an overview understanding of what's going on um, and uh, walk, walk people through some of the options so um, I'm the contact my uh, email and phone number were on the presentation this morning and on the website uh, and so if any um, growers are interested in in checking out what's going on uh, I'm the contact and we've already had numbers of groups come through so tours of um, uh, we had a viticulture um, course come through and have a look recently um, uh, various other groups Ollie's group came um, but I've also had growers ring up and say I want to come and have a look at such and such because I'm considering that and I really want to understand how it works and what it does. So that's, that's really what this is about um, and uh, really just demonstrating and giving people a chance to come and have a look. So uh, we're going to give Brad Knott uh, a chance to talk about the Vidivisor program um, which is, uh, well I might let him introduce it, it might be simpler than me trying to tell you what I think it is. <laughs> so Brad. Thank you Mark. Thank you Mark. Uh, hi everybody, my name is Brad Knott and I'm the project manager for Vidivisor. I have here today with me uh, Wayne from the Vidiculture team and over the back there Ryan uh, who's in the ground-based um, ground vision team. Uh, Vidivisor is a 
three-year, $5 million research project funded by Wine Australia, uh, River, uh, University of Adelaide and Riverland Wine. So Vitivisor uh, is known in the Riverland region as Hands Off Hectares, that's the program, and the project itself uh, is called Vitivisor. So uh, Vitivisor is a research project uh, aimed at lowering the cost of production for Riverland wine grape growers. It has its genesis here and it has its genesis with uh, trying to solve the pain points of wine grape growing in Riverland. Um, so what is it? Uh, it's a digital platform and it's a ground-based vision system. So I'm just going to briefly explain uh, a summary of, of those two items and then Wayne's going to very quickly talk about uh, the data collection and then maybe if there's questions about the ground-based vision system, we can uh, refer that back to Ryan back in the marquee because he set up uh, some of the prototype machinery there. So uh, this research project was designed to uh, fix the pain points of growers. We spoke about pain points earlier today, uh, some of which were about uh, data, data integration, uh, getting rid of all those multiple apps that you're using to make an informed decision and having them all in one place. So Vitivisor has three distinct layers. Uh, data aggregation is one. Uh, number two is a situational awareness layer. And then the third layer is about um, uh, prediction and advice. So the first layer, data aggregation, is about getting all that data into one place from those data sources uh, that uh, people like Andy spoke about this morning and Ollie, getting them all in one place so that you can then uh, make, ha have them available to make decisions. And uh, some examples of that are we have um, CIT, irrigation water data connected. Um, we have the MEA green brain uh, sensors connected. Uh, there is series imagery. Um, we have uh, water markets uh, and um, uh, we have a financial uh, software called Know Your Numbers, which again, it had its genesis here in the Riverland. So you've got all this data in one place, that's the first step, and that solves that pain point of having 12 apps to make one decision. The next step then is once you've got it all in place, is what do you do with it? So the research project in uh, combination or collaboration with CSIRO uh, uses Vine Logic. Vine Logic is a, is a biophysical model of a vine. Uh, uh, I think it's maybe 10 to 15 years old. Uh, the University of Adelaide worked with CSIRO to bring it out of the bowels of CSIRO. It's been made open source. It's been uh, recoded. And it really is the, the, um, uh, the biophysical model under the hood doing daily yield predictions. So now you have all this uh, data aggregation data from your vineyard. Vine logic is the research is being done to assimilate the data from the vineyard with Vine logic to give you those yield predictions. So when you're in your vineyard and you need situational awareness, Vitivisor will give you uh, what's going on with my canopy, uh, what's going on with uh, my finances, um, what's going on with my irrigation, and uh, in, in, it's in both uh, the past, present, and future. So, so now you've got uh, a value-added um, value situation with the data that you've been collected in, in your vineyard. The next, the next layer is about prediction and advice. So then you say, okay, with my irrigation intentions, uh, what sort of yield will I get with this much water and what will my gross margin be? So now you start to think about trade-offs and what-ifs uh, uh, that are happening throughout the season. So that's the digital platform. The second output is a ground-based vision system. So the, uh, the idea was to have a, a box that you could do incidental capture, put it on your ATV or your tractor, and as you're driving around, you're collecting data uh, that actually is being then used and fed in, into the system. Uh, so uh, the ground-based vision system team have been developing a, uh, a box that has uh, RGB and thermal image cameras uh, with a GPS, to RTK GPS. Uh, they've also experimenting with LiDAR and, uh, and also thermal imaging as well to, to plug into this box and um, stick it on your, on your tractor. So it's, it's now been seen just as uh, an extended data feed that can come into the Vitivisor system. The other part of this story is about uh, adoption and commercialization. The number one barrier for adoption of ag tech in Australia and probably worldwide is, is um, well, sorry, the barrier of adoption of ag tech is the actual adoption. And the problem is really uh, getting, getting the, the behavioral change of the growers, fixing the growers' pain points, delivering things that they need. And uh, one of the differentiators of the Vitivisor project is that uh, these ideas and steerage of the project has come from the growers themselves. So we'll be, um, uh, so 
one of the innovations that the Vidivisor project has realised is that how do we actually get growers in the Riverland to adopt this technology? Well, we're going to create a social enterprise that's owned uh, and managed by, by the actual growers themselves, and they will own the digital platform and they will own their data and they will have control of their own data. So really there's a whole other paradigm, a whole other story about data, data ownership and data sovereignty. And the, the real innovation we think of Vidivirus is not the technology because there's so much technology happening and it's very rapidly happening. The innovation is going to be the vehicle by which growers adopt this technology. So we can talk about that some more uh, back in the marquee. Um, the ground-based vision system is tracking uh, in a separate adoption and commercialization path, all of this has been developed open source. And so this technology can be harvested by industry, by technology organizations, either in its fullness uh, or in part. Uh, there's the data, there's the IP, there's the algorithms, uh, there is the actual hardware itself. So we want to engage with uh, third party technology organizations uh, for them to uh, you know, possibly harvest this IP and make your own products and services better. That's a very rapid summary. I'm just going to hand it to Wayne, who's going to very briefly talk about the extent of the data collection that we've been uh, collecting data for this project. Thank you. Good day, all. Um, my role with the project is uh, I'm the only pair of sort of local hands involved. Uh, so these two patches uh, I walk through weekly whenever there's any green on them um, with an iPhone on a selfie stick. And I'm the robot at the moment um, that will become the automated vision collecting box that you'll bolt on your tractor. So I'll walk through these patches, photograph every individual panel. Um, and so well, I was in here Monday uh, and then I go online and upload um, you know, a thousand images from this area, a couple of gigabytes of data go up into the cloud. That gets worked on by machine learning programs and so forth to, to sort of interface with the algorithms developed by the Vidi Canopy application you can get on your phone uh, that comes up with a plant area index which gives you um, sort of a, a, a bigger map of your patches. Um, so that data goes up um, weekly for both of these patches and multiple others in the Riverland from uh, Blanchetown through to, uh, through to Murtho. Uh, goes up in the cloud and gets processed and you can actually see some of that data. You can see the data for here uh, on the um, uh, Vidivisor dashboard at the moment. Um, to support that, uh, at regular points through the season, I uh, support that data with uh, physical counts. So I'll do bud counts, shoot counts, bunch counts, uh, inflorescence counts. Uh, uh, on fixed, we've got te 10 test panels in each of these sites and at each of the other sites. So at re those regular intervals at those stress points of the year or those particularly important points of the year, I'll go to each of those sites and do all those sort of counts. And the data that uh, uh, is taken from those set images that I take when, when those data points are collected uh, is used by the vision team uh, to refine and improve their machine learning programs and stuff so that uh, when I do the weekly walkthrough, they can come along and say, uh, okay, well, plant area index at the bottom of this patch decreased uh, last week. Uh, and that's because a, fr a frost went through the patch and wiped out the bottom two rows, which you might have noticed on the way in down here. So you can start to see those sort of things popping into your, into your, uh, into your dashboard for your particular area uh, on, a, on a regular basis. And uh, as, as the machine learning programs get better and better informed by the data I collect, uh, and as you get closer and closer to vintage, all the predictive cap uh, capacity and, uh, and abilities of the system improve to uh, refine the forward predictions towards vintage and harvest um, on a weekly basis or whenever you're, dr whenever you're driving through the patch and collecting that incidental data. Uh, at the moment, um, the uh, vision box that Ryan can show you this afternoon is uh, based on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, just has RGB sensors in there and of course good GPS data um, that's intended to be expanded and looked at further in terms of uh, better precision on the GPS and other UV IR sensors as well as, as mentioned the possibility of LiDAR. But at the moment I'm the robot that walks through the patch uh, and collects this all, f all physically uh, and, and uploads it weekly. Okay so when we get back we're up to the marquee for a quick panel session before we get some lunch. <laughs>